Hi guys, I'm Peter and this is part 3 of the door and button tutorial. In this part I'll show you how to make a door which actually opens and closes like a normal door, not just appears and disappears. So let's take a look at our door now. Uh, and you notice I made slight change here. So this, this box is now at the side of the door. That is, that is because we will be rotating the box and the door is bound to it, the door body. So it will be rotating just like a normal door would be uh, with this axis as a center of the rotation. And as you will see for now, so how do I do this? I just moved this door body 75 uh, centimeters by x axis. So as you will see now, we just have our three drawers, just like in the end of the previous tutorial, and they just work. So this, they appear and disappear, just like they should. And let's make a new door which opens like a normal door. Uh, just go here, you can create a blueprint based on this to inherit from this class, or you can say new blueprint, new blueprint and you say extend the door. Yeah, and you can say classic classic door, for example. Uh, if you now put it on the map and you will try to add this to an array of our attached doors of this button, it will work because um, this is an object-oriented uh, system, the blueprints, so you can add children to the array of uh, type of parents, no problem. So, and if you just play uh, this fourth door there is our it's the door of a child class, no classic door class, not of the door class. But you can see that it works. Now if you go here to the graph of a door, you can see that we have three functions used. And actually, actually we have three functions but five events. We have toggle open event, we have open door event, close door event, and we have two more, which are not displayed here anyway, but they are there update door opacity change and finished door opacity change and if you go to the child class sorry from child class classic door uh, you will be able to call all of these events and override all of these events so if you override them they will be called straight from the child so for example if I get toggle open and I say open door event open door and event close door. Uh, if I leave, leave them like this, uh, the blueprint system will call this implementation. And if I just play now, of course nothing will happen when I go on a button because this implementation is empty. Now, in case you don't know, uh, I just feel that I need to tell you, you can call parent functions, so the functions from the door. So if I just overall these events and I call call now the parent functions, of course everything will work just like it worked in parents. Because every event that I did, didn't overwrite, this event will be called from the parent. And if I overwrite and then I call the parent, it will be just calling the parent if I don't do anything else. You can add more code here or before the parent call. This is this is this is why the OOP is also basically so useful, even even the blueprints, uh, visual scripting language. So you can see that now this door works just like it should. And of course you can, for example, mix those two like this and put this here and put this here, but our tutorial is not about this. So what do we need to make our door open and close? Well, we don't need to touch this event, uh, because this event is just as good as it should. It toggles the uh, boolean value and then it calls for close door and open door depending on this boolean value. So we only need to overwrite event open door and event close door. And we could be using this door opacity change uh, timeline and we are even able to call uh, to get a delegate of it, so we can say opacity oh, change, you see we, have, we can call finish func and update func. But if we call update func, or implement it here, this is the same as this, so this is the same as the exact node. 
But the problem is that we don't get this Adora PACT value uh, from it because this event doesn't have any uh, arguments in it. And actually, we don't need it. So we will we'll make more our own uh, implementation. So the simplest way to open closed door is that take a look at this root component, get root, then set relative rotation of the root. For open door, we can just say that z rolls to 90, control C, control V. For closed door, this goes back to zero. No problem. This is the simplest way how we can roughly implement the open and close. So it goes open, close, open, close. So if this would be the uh, location of a door, just step here and you walk through, no problem. Okay, but of course we want to have something a little bit more fancy, so we just make a new timeline. And this timeline goes like... Uh, Rotated or around uh, root. And again, we just say that it goes like this. So first it's zero and then it raises. Because this is useful. That this way arises for me at least. So when we open the door, uh, we will play. And close the door will reverse. And notice how useful it is actually that if we start to close the door before we opened it, it will just reverse from the point where it was when it was opening, no problem. Okay, so let's go to the timeline at new uh, flow track. It will be door your rotation. And this rotation will go to uh, first of all it will be going for one and half seconds, for example. And shift click to at first point, it will go from zero, as I mentioned, and it will go to 90, when it will be one and five seconds. And then you can just fit the timeline value curve, okay, just like that. This is enough. Now, door your rotation. Uh, on the update, we set the relative location, uh, so, so sorry, set the relative rotation, and as we don't have our uh, root rotated in any other axis, we can just take this, we can say uh, make rotation, make rot, and this is your. So, as I mentioned, it's our box is not rotated on pitch on roll, so we can just leave those 0 and 0. And this value, uh, which will be 0, uh, this value and 0, We'll go here to the new rotation of the <coughs> of the root component, and yeah. So let's actually test it. I guess we're good to go. Okay, it opens, it closes, and now it does it smoothly. Okay. So uh, this is as simple as it can be, basically. Um, one thing you could do is that you can make it uh, rotate smoothly with the interp2. And if we, we will have this air interp2 uh, with which will interpret rotation. So this is also possible to, to use and this will make the door movement more smooth when it opens and closes. But I would say that this is as good as it, as it needs to be, to be, you know, to look useful enough as a door which could you could use in a project. And the last thing to do, of course, uh, let's go to the construction script, and it, it calls the parent construction script. And a parent construction script, it assigns this dynamic material instance of this uh, material, which is transparent. Uh, so, oh, sorry, translucent. As, as the material is translucent, it doesn't accept lights and other stuff. And it looks really ugly for a lit scene. So, Let's just throw this guy away, this bad guy, and we say that we take the door body, get the door body, and then we set its material to anything you want. And now you can set any normal material. 
so whatever um, something like that compile your play and now it looks like you got good good door well it, it doesn't look like door but still you know uh, it's lit and now you can use any materials you want any opaque materials uh, oops sorry so yeah this is a simple um, as it can be uh, so now you have a door which opens normally and closes like a normal door and of course you can override the normal door and you know put here different animations use this in interpolation and stuff uh, I hope you learned something in the next part we will enhance in the next part of the tutorial we will enhance the button button functionality uh, so yeah see you next time guys and bye bye